Matthew. I'll begin with uh, chapter 28. I will continue, I will continue with the message that I presented to you last week. Amen. Amen. But I just want to read a portion of the scripture about the resurrection of Christ, which is today in the morning for those eyewitnesses, for those who are eyewitnesses wrote down. Verse 28 says, after the Sabbath, verse 1, after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Nayo luna kora sabiti, wirali lugendo kugwako, goluna koro bere bere muna kom sanvuluna telo kcha, maria mu magdalene, ne maria mu woku bidi, neba chok lava a malalo, lava, waba wech kanka nechine ne kunsi, kubanga malaika wa mukama yava muguru, na chia, na y ringi se jinja, o kuli jawo, na li tula ko. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified, who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. That he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, and now I have told you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give God a mighty hand clap for that piece of scripture. It is done. It is finished. On Friday, when Christ was crucified, he went through the stages. When he went on the cross, he had to prove to the people that I am what I say that I am. And that I lay down my life, that I lay down my life because of my sheep. No one forces me to lay my life down, say but, but I do that so that the world may know that I I honor my father. For this is my father's will. That I may lay down my life. Only to raise it again. So that whosoever believes in me. May have eternal life. Now this is life internal. When a man will know the Father and, and Christ, that is internal life. The life of fellowship which Christ purchased for us. Today we are no longer enemies with God. No, are we aliens. But now we are sons in the kingdom. 
Now we are children. And we have fellowship. And our fellowship is between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Through the forgiveness of our sins. By the blood of Jesus. Now we have been redeemed. And taken back to our former position. Once we were alienated. Separated. From the love of the Father because of the sin which was brought into the world and gave authority to Satan to dominate us to an extent of people worshiping him and calling him Lord and Grandfather. People go to shrine and they say judge. Abantu bagenda masabo ne bagamba judge. Satan is an angel. Satani malaika. And his demons were angels. Ne mizimu je bali ba malaika. The word angel means servant. Echigamba muereza chitege. Echigamba malaika chitegezo muereza. Omudu. Abo omudu. Who is supposed to serve man? I know muereza omuntu. In the book of Revelation, John had a voice say, who will open the seal, who is worthy to open the seal so that mankind may live. And there was no one in heaven, no on earth. And John began to weep because the future of humanity was at stake. But, but he had a voice from one of the elders in heaven and comforted him. And he said, worry not and weep not. Behold the Lamb of God who was slain and through his blood has purchased the souls, the spirit, the body, the humanity back to God. Through his blood, he, he purchased the spirits of men, the bodies of men, and the lives of all men. The only thing when John turned to see the lamb on the throne, he didn't see the lamb. So the lion. It's true because Jesus had already resurrected. Glorified. He can't be the lamb. Because he had already sacrificed his life. Christ was a lamb on the cross. When he resurrected. He rose as a high priest. And when he ascended. He ascended as God. And when he sat, he was now the king of kings. The lion of Judah. And the Bible says, whoever touches you, whoever touches you, whoever touches you, whoever touches you Whoever touches you touches on the up of God's eye. Now, who will be your enemy? Who will be against you? If God is on your side. Is it cancer? Is it ulcers? Is it AIDS? 
Is it the present or the future? Powers of darkness? In all this, we are more than conquerors through Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks or reminds us the day when Christ rose from the grave. Reminds us our victory. Reminds us our, our position. Who we are in God and where we live right now. Genesis chapter 3. Let me begin from verse, no, let me begin from chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Chapter 1. Amen. Chapter 1. Just hold on, there's something that I'm looking for. Okay. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Katonda na yoge na tukolo mtu mungeli ya fe, mchifana nye cha fe, bafugenge ebyo mnyanja, nebibu kawagulu, nente, nensi yona nabulieche walula kunsi. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a reason why we repeat these things. It's not for ritual. It's not because we have to do that. But we have to repeat these words. Because when you will get to know more of God's word, then you will come to the full knowledge of the truth of God. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you will know the truth. Now, these are God's words. That is the position of humanity. Say with me, that is my position. Please speak louder prophetically. That, that, that is my position. To lead, to rule. Now speak it again. That is my position to rule the livestock to rule the birds of the air and everything in the air and to rule over everything that moves on the earth and all the ground that is my position. Say with me, that is my position. I am a king. And I rule with Christ. I am not a beggar. I am not a pope. I am not a tail. I am a head. Amen. Amen. Verse 27. So God created me and you in his image. In the image of God, he created me, a male, and her, the female, in the image. 
Mungeli ya katonda moyanto nderanze o mukazi na o musajja. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is the story of creation. But now let's go to chapter 3. Let me read in chapter 3 from verse 9. Well, let me begin from verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them, that is Adam and Eve, male and, and female, were opened and they realized that they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Amen. Amen. They sewed fig trees. Now this is the account of sin. So they, they lost their gamut of righteousness. And they tried to make their own gamut. That's where the word religion comes from. Religion is man's way or man's means to reach to God. To be holy. Amen. It's Amen. called religion. But salvation is God's way of reaching man. Religion is man-made system of reaching to God. But salvation is God's way of reaching to man. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, now you're going to note the first sign of uh, of sin is fear. Man already decided to run away from God. Now, verse 9. Verse 9. But the Lord God called to man, Where are you? God ignored the fig tree, the, the fig coverings. Because no man can reach God. It has, it has to be God reaching you to save you. So that he can save you. And the man answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're reading these scriptures, they may not exactly mean what you think. Naked here may not mean stripped of clothes but means strip, uh, stripped of their position stripped of their righteousness stripped of who they are their position amen as leaders as the rulers of the earth and verse 11, he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Now, 
The man said, the woman you put with me, if you had not brought that woman, there would no, this would not have happened. Ladies and gentlemen, stop blaming. Always acknowledge and put into account of your Problem. The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord turned to the woman. What is this you have done? The woman said, no, don't blame me. It is the serpent. Verse 14. By the way, we are having the Swahilis here. Amen. Amen. And if in case you don't understand English or Uganda, you are supposed to be given in ears. There is someone interpreting for you the Swahilis. So some of you, please, if you see people who are having headphones, don't think they are having a swag in the church. No, they are, they are listening. Amen. Amen. Uh, they, 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 are, they, 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 are, they are listening through an interpreter. And in case you are here, you did not get it, please. And you can't understand both English and Swahili. I mean, sorry, and Luganda, please. Uh, you can put up your hand so that someone can help you. Okay. Amen. Amen. So please, someone will help. Are you sure that, that, that you can just help that person there and find out? Amen. Amen. Okay. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cast are you above all the livestock, and all the wild animals, and you will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Mukama katonda nagamba msotanti kubango kose chino okoli mitwa guopsinga nsole zomu nyumba zona no kusinga buli nsolo eyo munsiko onata mbzango lubuto onali ange mfufe na kuzonezo ula mubuo. Um, for so many times, whenever we read with the Bible, we simply jump over and uh, no one stays back or skips a bit and asks himself, what exactly does this mean? All which conversation or this conversation is between who and who? So the Lord said you will eat dust. Now I want you to note that word dust. But I told you last Sunday that you know as well as I do. Snakes don't eat dust. Snakes eat rodents. Snakes eat uh, 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 small, small uh, 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 Reptiles and, 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 and animals. Depending on the size of the snake. And the bigger snakes even are capable of taking a calf, a goat, antelope, even human beings. For example, like, like the Python and uh, the Anacondas in South in Latin America. All these are snakes. I have never seen a snake that eat dust. Amen. Amen. But now, this conversation, remember, is between God and the serpent, which is Satan. And God is revealing a message here that man 
has brought trouble on himself by believing the lie of the devil. Because the devil is a liar from the beginning to the end. But God is telling Satan because your intention was to rule indeed you will rule. You will rule that flesh. You will rule man. Because God here is referring to person. Let's go to verse 15. And God goes on to say, You will eat the dust until a full, the fullness of time. But I'm going to put a name between you and the woman. The conversation changes right now. Now it's no longer between man and God. But God is addressing the serpent. He's addressing to Satan. You wanted to rule. And because of what you've done. Your food will be dust. But I'm going to put an enmity between you and the woman. And I told you last Sunday. That means man is exempt. But all of us know whenever you find a snake, whether, whether you're a man or woman, it will bite you. But we know that God is speaking something profound. And the Lord God said, I'm going to put an enmity between the woman and, uh, 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 and her offspring and your offspring. And the seed of a woman will crush your head. But you will strike his heel. Now when the snake bites, it is painful. It causes a fatal damage. But God here is saying there is going to be an enmity between the snake, the serpent, and the woman. Between the generation of a woman and the generation of Satan. All of us know women do not have seeds to continue generations. I want to make it more clear today. Lineages come from men. It is a man who produces who gives seed. That's why a child is called a man's child. But here God is saying the offspring of a woman will be at logheads between that with the with the devil sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, God was talking about Christ. That no man can save others. Because the seed of man is corrupted now. Satan, you wanted to rule. You wanted to take over the earth. But there is something you don't know. There is another seed which has not been corrupted and it's called the seed of a woman Adam 
is already corrupted. Death has come. Whoever comes through Adam dies. Whoever comes through Adam is dust. But there is a generation which will come through a woman who is the second Adam. And when he comes, he will crush the serpent's head. But the offspring of the second Adam, which is the church of Christ, will be the greatest enemy of the devil and his demons. Christ will crush the serpent and then will take, will deal, we, the church, we will be able to deal with the demons. That's why the first thing Jesus said after resurrection all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me now you go and preach this good news and as you are moving you are going to see a sign demons will flee in my name demons will be running away from you because demons know now the offering that the offspring of a woman has resurrected which is the church of Christ come on give God a mighty hand clap verse 16 to the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With the pain you will give birth to children, your desire will be for your husband. And he will rule over you. Now, please don't take that literally. Amen. Amen. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. For in Christ, there is no Jew or Gentile, free or slave, woman or man, but all of us are children. So therefore, but if you have not yet received Jesus, you are under that curse. But if you received Jesus, you have been delivered from that. Now you are free to, to be married or not to marry at all. And you are free for freedom Christ redeemed you. You don't need to be in abusive marriage because, you know, the Bible says, no, you are free. You are free for freedom. Christ set you free. And 1 Corinthians chapter 7 deals with all those things. Amen. Amen. Okay, then let's go on, on verse 17. To Adam he said, now you know these words, to Adam he said, to Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cast is the ground. Now, speak with me. Cast is the ground. Speak it louder. Cast. Cast is the ground. Now, you keep that, okay? 
through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life Mm. Okay. The ground is going to produce what? 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 Up to that time there were no thorns and thistles. The world was perfect. It was beautiful. Roses around. Flowers is a picture of a good life. Thorns is a picture of misery problems, Bizibu. suffering, Kubona abona. tears, Maziga. and pain, no according to Matthew chapter 13. Thorns that pierce your heart, pierces the mind, pierces the soul. May not literally talk, uh, they don't literally hear talking about the thorns, these, these real thorns. Because Jesus interpreted that in the book of Matthew chapter 13. In the parable of the sower. And he said that seeds that fell among thorns represents the, 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 the word of God that fell, that, 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 that was received by people whose hearts are full of troubles, challenges, fears, worries, anxiety, and helplessness, and the deceit of the wealth of yes, the world. Amen. Amina. Let's go on. Let's read. Um, why did you take it off? Don't take it off, please. Just bring it back. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. Now, please note the word. Cast is the ground, okay? Note the word. Thorns. Okay, let's read. Let's go on. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken for dust. You are, and to dust you will return. Inti muntu yo ezumu masogo monoli dange mire o kutu sarodi damu taka kumanga omo mu wajibwa kumango linfu fugwe ne mufu fumori da. Now we understand. Kati tu tegera that when God told Satan, inti katonda boyagamba Satan. You will walk. You will crawl on your berry. Inti ogena kutwe waluli da kulubu toro. And you will eat dust. Ero na liyanga mufu. Actually, what he was talking was that surely indeed you will rule man. I have given you that authority to have whatsoever you want to do on his life until he who comes until he comes humanity is in your hands you will bring tears you will bring sufferings you will bring poverty you will cause sickness I mean you will use whatever you will rule until the seed of the woman comes now you know to those words because when he comes he will crush the head now the question is can the snake eat when the head is crushed uh-huh Give God a mighty hand clap. 
You remember in the example of, of, of Job? When God told Satan, where are you from? And Satan said, I'm from moving around the world to see what is going on. And God told the devil, have you noticed that gentleman called Job, my servant? No one is like him. And Satan said, oh, it's because you have protected him. The rest of others, you haven't protected him. You have protected him. You have broken the covenant. I'm supposed to rule over him. What did God say? It's okay. Your life is yours. His flesh is yours. But on his life, I do not permit you to touch it. And the devil moved away from the presence of God and brought all kinds of havoc. Frustrations. Misfortunes. Should his children die? His property lost. His body was badly damaged. That is the picture of who we are without Christ. But praise be to God. So Satan will rule until Christ comes. And when he comes, he will crush that serpent. He will crush that snake. And then your dust, your dust, you man who is called the dust, after the resurrection of Christ, our bodies will no longer be dust. Our bodies will no longer be dust. But they shall be called the temples of God. Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! Are you getting that? Are you getting that? First Corinthians chapter 1, I think 16. I don't know. Don't you know that you are temples of the the project where are they? Oh, projector, put it there for me, please, so that we can read. You know, we, you know, we need to understand these revelations. First Corinthians, I see, I think chapter one. Is it second or first? First, chapter one. Six nineteen. Okay, there is there, there are so many anyway. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You oh. are not your own. Amen. Amen. Now let's go back to, to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis here we see. That is in chapter 3 as I was reading there. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken for you are dust. Your body is dust. But I, Satan will eat dust. In other words, he will have control over your body. He will live in your in, in, in your in, 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 in people's bodies. And he will cause whatever he wants. Until Christ comes. 
Come on, give God a mighty hand clap. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He will rule man. He will live in his body. He will have control. He will do whatever you want. In that body. Because it is dust. Until he comes. But when he comes. He will crush. Satan. And then we will be transformed. For if anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. The old is gone. We are no longer of the devil. Now we are redeemed. Now we are sons of God. Now we are children of God. We are no longer dust. But now we are temples. Satan has no control over my body. He has no right to live in my body because now I'm a new creation through Jesus Christ through his blood I am washed by his blood you are washed by his blood and through your confession you are through your confession that he is Lord you are given the right to be children of God. And the old is gone. The new has come. And it is by the Holy Spirit. I'm no longer dust. Now I am a child. I'm no longer of the first Adam. Now I belong to the second Adam. I died with Christ and I rose with him through his blood this body is washed which once was of the devil and tormented me now this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost I render my body to him for our bodies is, are not for sexual immorality our bodies are not for smoking our bodies is not for adultery we did that when we were in his kingdom because he had control over us he used our bodies we were slaves to sin slaves to Satan we had the desire to do what is right and we knew what is good and what is bad but the evil we did not want to do we kept doing because Satan was in control but glory be to God glory be to God when the son of man came when Jesus went on the cross and shed his blood and went to the grave so that I may go up he went to hell so that I may kiss the ground of heaven when he rose again I rose with him and now I'm a new creation the old is gone I want you to know 
about these words. Cast is the ground. Through your toil you will eat. Through the sweat of your brow. You will eat. Now, this is why in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, go to Jesus talking to his disciples. Jesus told his disciples, God, Jesus told his disciples what do people say that I am? And they gave him so many names. Until Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus told him, that revelation has not been has not been given to you by flesh. But that is a revelation of my father. For whoever will have that revelation will have that will have eternal life. I will give him the keys to open that gate and go and eat of the tree of life. And I am the life. I am the tree of life. Now note these things. Then Jesus told them, I'm going to Jerusalem so that all the scriptures be fulfilled. Right from Genesis until now. Because when I go to the cross, I'm going to triumph over Satan. Now the time has come that this world may be judged and the prince of the world will be chased out. These are the revelations. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus. Yes. They went and had the last supper. And on the last supper, he did something that he usually doesn't do. Because those were the, <clears throat> they were still in the seven days of the Passover feast. Where the sacrificial lamb has to be killed. In the Jewish custom. And the Jews did not know that today or this week, actually Christ will go three, will traverse three phases of life. The first Adam, I mean the, as the second Adam, the lamb, and also the high priest. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. So on that day, he woke up and, and broke bread. And then he said it. This bread signifies my body that is going to be torn in pieces for you. For you and all of us. And after they ate without knowing, he got the cup. And he said, take and drink. For this cup, this cup is a sign, I mean, stands in for my blood, which is going to be shed to create a new covenant. For the remission of your sins, to wash away, to cleanse you completely. 
That's what we call the great exchange. At that time, Jesus was giving humanity his life. Giving humanity his position. But all of you know the position of God. Christ. The position of Christ. He's a son. He's righteous. He's holy. He's glorious. Power and wealth belongs to him. Peace belongs to him. But you know what belongs to man. Death. Frustration. Fear. Worries. Troubles. On that day, Jesus gave his body to them. His blood. And he took on their life. He took, now that's why you sing that song. He took our sorrows. Oh, he took our sorrows. That's why you sing that he carried all our sorrows to the cross. Amen. Amen. Clap for yourselves. The moment he did that. Jesus became man. Yes, and the disciples became, became divine. Immediately, Jesus turned to them. Yes, and he said, Let's go. The Bible says they crossed over the Kindron Valley and went to the garden. Now the question is why? Why the garden? Remember, Jesus had told them this week all the scriptures will be fulfilled. We are going to Jerusalem. All scriptures must come true. Why not? In Jerusalem, why not anywhere? Why did he have to go to Gethsemane in the garden? When God came to Adam, he spoke to him in the garden. He spoke to Satan in the garden. And he promised that when he comes, he will crush. So now, Jesus as the second Adam, now is man. He has to go to He has to go to garden. And then the Bible says, within a stone's throw, he went and knelt down and he began to pray. Until his sweat became blood. Why? Why? Because God had told Adam. Out of your, the sweat of your bro, you will eat. Cast is the ground. That's why Jesus goes back to the garden. To deal with the issue of the curse. To deal with that issue of the curse. And he paid it in full. He sweated 
yatuyana so that you may not sweat ole moku tuyana now they are not talking about the actual sweat kate bogera ku ntuyo zino they are talking about the hardships of life bayo gera ku mitawane ejo bulamu that you may not go through those hardships ole moku jitamu you may not sweat ole moku tuyana and he made sure that sweat turns into blood Era. and the blood dropped on the ground and when that precious bl- blood dropped on the ground the ground became holy nakakasantino yatuya na pake ntuyo wezafu ko musai ero musai obo kastagwato nya kutaka etaka nalyo nelifuka tukuvu for those who believe in jesus eliya babakiriza yesu hey ladies and gentlemen abami na bachala oh ladies and gentlemen abami na bachala And as soon as he done that he has done that Tayamalo college they came for him Nebamunona and they took him out Nebamutwala Remember Adam in the the first Adam was taken out by angels Adam we yasoka yatwaliwa ba malaika They threw him out Nebamujayo mulusuku nebamugoba And the second Adam Jesus Christ after having purified the ground he was picked by men evil men and took him out of the Adam wo kubiri we yamalo kutukuze taka NC na twaliwa basajja wabine bamujayo na yemulusuku Remember God had told Adam Jukida katonda yali agambye Adam Cast is the ground Ntie taka likolimi out of the sweat Ero kuva muntu yozo and also it will bring you thorns Ntie razidi na kuleteranga amagwa So they took Adam they took Jesus out No recho ne bajayo Yesu ne bamujja mulusuku They brought him before Caiaphas Ne bamuleta masoga Caiapha And while they were still there Era we bali ngaba chali eyo He was still in the the, 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 the this side Nga chali oluyiruli Sodias abajja saba sidikale and knowing that they were that they were fulfilling scriptures mubutamanya anti bali batukiriza bya wandikibwa they were mocking nebamujerega they made a crown of thorns nebamukolera engule eyamagwa they did not they, they never made a belt of thorns tebamukolera musipigwa amagwa or shoes of thorns obanga toza amagwa they made a crown bakola ngule why rachi so that he may carry asobolo kubietika and he carried ne yetika the thorns on his head amagwa kumutwegwe now that curse is also broken katinech koli mecho na chone chimenyebwa thorns represent well I, I th- you read it in matthew chapter 13 muja kusoma matayo 13 a life of full of frustrations mulabe obulamu obujjudde okubona abona sufferings okubona abona okuyiganyizibwa anxious okwera likirira and so on and so forth nebiringe ebyo those things that pierce the heart of man ebintu ebya bifumita omutima gwo muntu the bad news you hear every day amawulira amabiga owulira buli lunaku jesus took it all yesu byona yabietika upon his head kumutwegwe he was brought before Caiaphas naletewa masoga kefa now why before Caiaphas rachi mu masoga kefa because it is the high priest to Kubanga. condemn the passover lamb kabono omukulu ya ino kuberanga awayo awayo mwana gwendiga ogwo kuitibwa every year the- Buli mwaka a passover lamb had to be brought by the high priest omwana gwe ndige ogwo kuita ko kwali gwino kuyete wakabono the sins of the whole world already we be seen and then he would condemn it kill it and then they burn it nakusalira omusango ne baguta ne baguocha so that's why it is to, it had to be kaya first to judge jesus yeso nga rachi kefa ya yino okubone okusalira yesu omusango so that he can be crucified asobolo okubonereze asobolo oku Amen. 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 And on the cross the Bible says Era ku musalaba Bible egamba Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 Aba Colossayo 2:13 These are the words as I wind up Bino bye bigambo nga maliriza 
Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. Let's read together if you can see on the screen. 1, 2, 3, go. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all. Ntinamwe, bwe mwali nga mufute orebi ono nobya mwe. Nobu takomolebua, oromu bidi gwa mwe. Yaba fula bala mwa muna ye. Bwe yamala o kutusonyiwa ebi ono nobya febi ona. Amen. Amen. Having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us, that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. No kusangula endagano eya wandi kibwa mumateka eya tuole keda eya li omula be wafe na yo ya jijawa wakati mukubo bo ya jiko merida kumusalaba. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made public spectacle of them, triumphing over them, triumphing. O gatambi ya konga linya. Triumphing over the powers of darkness, triumphing over the spirits, over them with what? By the cross. Inti we ya ya we ya ya mbuli la dala owa mi na masaza na biwe mu kiriza muratu we ya biwa mbuli la kugwa omusalaba. Now that is the time when he crushed. Awoke kasera we ya bete ntera. Amen. Amen. Verse sixteen. Oreku mi no mukaga. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat, drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Inti kalo muntu ya nata bande nyanga mubio kulia, oba mubio kunywa, oba orembaga, oba oromwezi, oguboneka, oba orasabiti. These are shadows of the things that were to come. The reality, the truth, however, is found in Christ. Inti ya biyo chechi sikini ze chebi ya vigendo kucha, na yuwa mubidi, oba butufu wa abuwa kwe kristu. Hallelujah! Amen! Now you are delivered. Katimu anu nuliwa. You are set free. Don't let the enemy enslave you. Don't believe his lies. When you compare yourself with others. And you look at your circumstances. And then you say maybe I am still under a curse. No ladies and gentlemen. Let the seven never jabu. No ladies and gentlemen. You were born again. You were delivered. You were set free. You were a child of God. Now you have a new title. Revelation chapter one six says. Now you are priests and kings. And not only that, but in Ephesians chapter 2, it shows your position where you are. That you rose again with Christ. And you are seated with him. The Bible says you were raised, Christ raised us together. And made us sit. Together in the heavenly place. In Genesis it says. In toil. In sweat. In running. In doing whatever. You will eat. But in the New Testament. God raised you up. He raised you up. And gave you a seat. Now look here, look here, look here. He gave you a seat. The picture changes. Now we are seated. Not alone. But I'm seated. With Christ. Where? In the heavenly places. Heavenly places. How far? How far is? 
Chili wawam kuyu kanachi. Verse seven seven says. Oramu sanvulu gamba. That the uh, okay no no not this one. But, but, but there is another one which says that uh-huh, God raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places far above principalities, powers, dominion, and all kinds of things. Come on, give God a mighty heart. Amen. Amen. So don't let anyone judge you. Don't look down on yourself. The man went to the cross. The man died. Shed his blood. Rose again. He's the king of kings. And he has given you a title. Therefore, the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1, and verse 2, consider it pure joy when you go through some sufferings. Because those sufferings are now not the same sufferings you had when you were in the kingdom of darkness. But now this is the suffering of the character. The oppression, the oppression you're going through now is not likened to when you were still in Egypt. When you were under the oppression of Satan. Now this kind of suffering you're going through is to work on your character. Such that what is in the inside is like and what is outside. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16. Eh, Abba Corinthians chokubidi nyakumi na mukage eh, gamba. From verse 16, eh, gamba. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though outward man, our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. God is allowing circumstances to work around you so that what is on the outside can shrink so that what is on the inside will be made manifest. So whatever you are going through is light affliction, is momentary troubles. And is there for work, it is it's there to work for us a far more exceeding and eternal way. Amen. 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 So therefore, stand boldly. Go and enjoy your Easter. Know your position that you were redeemed and keep on confessing. Let the poor say that I am rich. Let the sick say I am healed. Let the weak say I am strong. So keep on confessing who you are. Not to what you see around. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now stand up on your feet. And now we are going to confess. We are going to confess who we are. Yeah. Say with me. I am the I am a king. According to the promise of God. Please speak it. Speak it. I am a king. According to the word. I am a priest. According to the word. I am a head. Not a tail. According to the word. I am blessed. In the city. 
in the country according to the word. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in according to the word. I don't walk by sight by what is around me. I walk by faith by what God tells me. God tells me I am healed. My body is the temple. It's no longer the dust. It's no longer the dust of the devil. It's now the temple of God and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside. These lights, these light and temporal troubles, these light and momentary troubles, they are there momentarily. They are there for a moment to achieve me a far much glory. Don't laugh at me, my enemy. I may look poor, but I am not. I may look weak, but I am not. I may look sick, but I am not. The real me is already at work inside. The Holy Spirit, together with me, is inside of me and we are working on something. My enemies my enemies you are about to see who I am and you will come and kneel down. You will come to me and you will say these words surely you have a God. Hallelujah! That's what we are. That's who we are. That's where we are going. Even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't confess that I'm in the valley of death. But I confess that I know my God has already set a table somewhere before mine enemies people about to see your cars people about to see your houses people about to see your families people about to see who you are when the glory appears already you are holy and righteous but people about to see the inside coming out if you remain strong with Christ Father in the mighty name of Jesus no 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 just hold on let me let me pray bless also the offerings at once if you didn't get an envelope just put up your hands and someone will bring the offerings to you. We will bring the, the basket to you. Just put up.